Right, if you've been tuning in to Microsoft Build, you'll have heard of Microsoft Fabric, Microsoft's new data platform, which is meant to unify all of the different data products that Microsoft has offered pretty much up to, up to date. It's kind of the evolution of Synapse, the fabled Synapse Gen 3, but it, it adds a few more things than that. Now, you've probably seen some of the demo videos. You've maybe watched the keynote and the, and the breakout sessions, but there's nothing like actually seeing it in real life without pristine demos. So that's what I'm going to show you today. So you will be logging into a new endpoint. So instead of, uh, well, what we know as app.powerbi.com to access Power BI stuff, you now access app.fabric.com.microsoft.com. And you'll see that this is this new landing page. So we have a bunch of what they call experiences within Microsoft Fabric. So these are different, again, essentially facades over your data estate. So we have the familiar one top left um, in Power BI, but we also have data factory, data engineering, data science, data warehouse, and real-time analytics experiences. Those last four using the same Synapse Blue branding and actually using the same Synapse terminology. So those of you that are using Synapse already, you'll be quite familiar with uh, the artifacts that we're working with here, dealing with here, and even Data Factory. We all know Synapse had this uh, the pipelines element, which was just the lift and shift of Data Factory. Well, Data Factory has kept its name in Fabric as Data Factory, but again, it's the similar pipelines experience, which we'll see in a moment. But fundamentally, we have these six different experiences currently, um, and the idea is these are kind of kind of aligned to uh, some of the personas that you would have working within Fabric. So remember, Fabric is kind of the shift even further towards self-service, where we're bringing these experiences closer and closer to the, the personas that need to be doing these tasks. So I can click on any of these, but also I want to take the opportunity to show you this kind of experience selector down here. So these six experiences are just stacked up on top of one another. So we can click, for example, data engineering, and that brings me to a data engineering specific view where I can create new artifacts that are related to data engineering. So we've got a lake house, a notebook, a spot job definition, or a data pipeline. Similarly, if I change to data science, I can create data science related artifacts like models, experiments, and notebooks. Then if we move to data warehouse, there's only currently one thing that we can create with a data warehouse, and that's a data warehouse. And then finally, with real-time analytics, we've got uh, a KQL database, KQL query set, and event stream. So these first two are much the same as Data Explorer, the, the preview feature over in Synapse, which never quite made it out of preview. Event stream is this new feature within Fabric, which is very similar to the, the no-code editor that you find in Azure Stream Analytics, if, you've, uh, if you're familiar with that. So those are all the Synapse experiences, but for Power BI, we have our usual Power BI experience, which I'm sure a lot of you are already familiar with. Um, and then in Data Factory, there's only a single thing Data Factory we can do in Data Factory um, at the moment, and that's create a, a data pipeline. So these are all the different experiences. And if I go to navigate to a, a workspace that I've got some artifacts in, you'll see that there are various types of artifacts within um, this experience. So we've got notebooks, reports, data sets, SQL endpoints, lake houses. What are all these things? Well, we're not going to dive into exactly what all of these things are in loads of detail in this, um, uh, in this video. But what I will show you is a, is a couple of the experiences. So if I go into a notebook, for example, just take a few seconds for that to load. This is quite a familiar notebook experience, right? We've got our code cells on the right. We've got some markdown cells as well. But what we've also got now is this kind of this mount on the left-hand side, and that's a lake house. So again, without going into too much details, a lake house is essentially a, a, a warehouse that lives uh, in your data lake as files and potentially table formats, which also 
are persisted as files, but can uh, include the metadata so that they can be read and treated as tables using uh, storage formats such as Delta Lake. But we have this on the right hand side and we can do things like drag and drag and drop our files onto there to be automatically kind of code generating the, the Spark code. But also things like notebooks, we've got more kind of the productivity suite type features like uh, commenting and also kind of collaborating on, on notebooks, which is uh, which is really cool. But if I go back to the uh, the workspace, that's a notebook. But I've also got these other these other artifact types. Data sets are my uh, the the usual Power BI data sets that you that we all know and love. Now a SQL endpoint is a a SQL endpoint over your lake house table. So any tables you write with Spark and create a lake house table, you can query those using a SQL endpoint. So very similar to how in SQL Serverless in Azure Synapse, you could query over a Delta table in Delta format in your data lake. That's what the SQL endpoints do. Everything in Fabric, all the tables in Fabric are stored as this open source Delta lake format, this Delta table format. This SQL endpoint enables you to query those Delta tables and um, and join them together or wrangle them however, however you want. But this is a read-only SQL endpoint. Um, other things that we have in here are the other pipelines, as I suggested earlier, which if I uh, if I go into one of these pipelines, if we just take a few seconds for that to load up. This is just a, a familiar experience around data pipelines. So it's a very simple one I've got here, but I've got parameters, this switch statement, and I'm doing a, a copy activity with slightly different configuration depending on what parameters. But we have a, our familiar experience. So, so Fabric is bringing in a couple of new bits of functionality, which we'll highlight in, in, separate, in separate videos, but it's also just uh, kind of resurfacing some existing functionality that we found in Azure Synapse and other tools like Stream Analytics with event streams. And you might be thinking, well, wasn't Azure Synapse meant to unify all of these things? Well, yes and no. So Azure Synapse was a, uh, a, PaaS, a PaaS service, so platform as a, as a service. So you still had to provision it in Azure. You had to provision a data lake and you had to hook a few things together. So it, it, it kind of integrated things at a UX level, but at the data level, so being able to kind of query any any, any files with any any storage engine that wasn't that wasn't possible. Now Fabric, as well as adding a couple of, uh, of features that didn't live in Azure Synapse, it's also integrating things at a data level. So everything's stored as this Delta Lake open format, so that multiple compute engines can read from the same data that was created by a different compute engine. Now they can't actually you can't have multiple engines write the same to the same data table but once a data table has been written by any one of the um, any one of the engines it can be read by any of the other engines because it's using the same table format across so that's what fabric is one of the one of the uh, unique selling points of, of fabric is this uh, interoperability between engines now if we go back to kind of the UX and the UI, you'll see that after I've created these two, uh, the, these uh, opened these two artifacts, you'll see them opening below the workspace selector on the left. So I actually can uh, kind of navigate between these two artifacts quite quickly. Now this is kind of pivoted the synapse view of the world where we had horizontal tabs, we now have vertical tabs. So that'll take a bit of getting used to if you are familiar with um, Azure Synapse. But as you see with the with the UI, it's very, very similar to the Power BI experience. Now, I know I, for one, when I look at this, I get, get a little bit overwhelmed with just the, the lack of organization here because we've got loads of different types of things all living in a single list. But as with Power BI, we can actually filter for the type of artifact that we're going for. So a notebook or a report or data sets we can, we can filter for that. And we can even see lineage views. So how some of these things um, uh, depend on one another and tie together, we can see a lineage view just like we can in Power BI. 
some other things that are possible we've got deployment pipelines still if i go to some workspace settings we also have git integration which is great so git integration from the get-go rather than it being an, an afterthought it's still got some um, some places to improve some features that haven't landed yet but that is that is there and you should definitely start using it on the uh, data engineering side, we've got some configuration options around the Spark compute that are used in uh, in the notebooks and Spark job definitions experience, including some library management tools so we can add you know, feeds and we can add custom libraries that we may have built locally. The workspace roles are uh, currently very similar to Power BI workspace roles. So you've got your admins, your members, your contributors, and your viewers. Now, again, we won't go into the details of exactly what role can do what in this, uh, in this video. We'll have separate resources on our blog or our YouTube channel for that. Uh, but it should feel uh, relatively familiar for those of you um, familiar with Power BI. We also have a monitoring hub. So much like in uh, Azure Synapse, you have um, uh, you have the, the monitoring area of Azure Synapse. We also have the monitoring hub in, uh, in Fabric. If I go to something that I have done things that would have been monitored recently, so data engineering tab, I have a bunch of notebooks, Spark job definitions and um, that I've run over the last couple of weeks. We can see those all in a nice list and we can actually drill through to some of them if we want to drill into more detail. And this will take me to the actual Spark application that was created when I ran this and we can access the Spark history server as well. Now, I don't really want to go too much deeper into, into this. This was meant to be a whiz around um, uh, Microsoft Fabric I hope that that's proven useful. We'll have a load more content going into um, deeper, deeper detail for, for lots of these artifacts. So please stay tuned. In the meantime, have fun playing around with Microsoft Fabric. It's certainly exciting for it to now be available in public preview. Let us know if you have any comments. Otherwise, watch out for the next videos. Thank you.